You know, I've, I've been a part of some some great teams in the UK when I played and, and saw what kind of goes into um, the qualities that go into to some of these players. You know, I played with a Jamaican international at Birmingham, Marlon King, who, who was an absolutely wonderful player. He had, he had so much talent, uh, Jamaican background. Uh, you know, I could think of a guy like Kevin Molino, Trinidad and Tobago, um, Wells, who, who's Bermuda, who obviously plays with Bristol, uh, Naki Wells, like wonderful players. So um, I have saw the talent. I know it's it's absolutely incredible the players that are being produced in the Caribbean and how they can they can make it to the highest level. All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is Cal Blankendahl from the Caribbean Sports Entertainment Management Group. I'm here with Mr. Stephen Cutwell of the Oakville Blue Devils. He's the president of one of the larger soccer organizations in North America, in Canada. He's going to tell us about the entire organization, the way it was formed, what opportunities they offer potentially to youth players, and what their ambitions are in 2022 and beyond. So here on the Football Insight Program, we are welcoming Mr. Stephen Cudwell of the Oakville Blue Devils. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Cal. Looking forward to having a discussion on, on football in general. Thank you. So give us a little bit of background about the Oakville Blue Devils. Who are you and what are your ambitions? Yeah, our ambitions are, are, are quite extensive, to be honest. We are uh, we're an academy in the uh, greater Toronto area. We're in a, a, a place called Oakville, which is about 45 kilometres outside the Toronto. And we, uh, we've been formed by some really great people who have done, done some significant things in the, uh, the soccer landscape in the past oh, 20, 30 years. Uh, Duncan Wilde, Billy Steele, and of course, a very good friend of yours, Brett Mosen. So the, the three guys have been uh, running the Blue Devils for a number of years now. I think we've been going about six or seven years as an academy but they have experience from other organizations and they've, they've brought that know-how to the blue devils to try and create a pathway for players uh to the semi-pro game uh from on and even the pro game and beyond but through an academy through a system to try and integrate them in and, and have them playing at the highest levels of the game so we play in a semi-pro league at the top level called league one ontario we've been champions champions of that a, a couple of times and we're perennial contenders and so we, we we have the kind of top half of that pathway in, in some good shape but we want to try and create more more quality coming through the academy to either get to that team or hopefully beyond to the pro game as well okay so let's start with you since we've heard about the, the oakfield blue devils organization who is steven and how did you become the president uh, I am Scottish origin, obviously. I think you probably tell that with my accent, which has never changed. Um, I, I was a professional soccer player. I left Scotland when I was 16 and I went to Newcastle United in England. And I spent uh, the vast majority of my playing career in, in England with a number of teams, Newcastle United, Sunderland, Burnley, uh, Wigan, Birmingham. Uh, and, and I jumped between the Championship and the English Premier League I uh, had a, a decent career, played 12 times for Scotland and then got an opportunity to come to Canada and play for Toronto FC in the MLS uh, in the latter stages of my career. Came for a couple of years, uh, played a bit for TFC, learned about MLS and and then uh, w w was given a, a chance to stay a bit longer in the Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment Organisation uh, who owned TFC, the Leafs, the Raptors, learn more about the business of sport. And ultimately, ultimately, through my involvement with MLSE and, and youth sport, uh, found my way to, to the Oakville Blue Devils. We, I, I first met Duncan and Billy, actually, for a lunch through a good friend of ours called Ken Beecham. And we had a lunch. We chatted about my, my uh, vision in terms of how an academy should be run and the opportunities we could provide kids. And that led to a meeting with our CEO, a guy called Shen Go, um, who I work closely with now. More on the business side, but my, my presidential role is, is is to kind of straddle that technical and business aspect of the club 
and to help with strategy and direction about wh where we need to improve and grow and 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 you know and sort of learn to to make this thing into what we want it to be which is you know the the, the sort of biggest uh semi semi pro club in in north america so we've got a bit of work to be done there but we we feel like we have many aspects of it um buttoned down we we just want to become you know larger and larger as, as time goes on and and as we sort of develop this game in canada and head towards which is a you know a big event in 2026 with the world cup coming to canada us and mexico and and so we're, we're quite well positioned to capitalize on that and, and and to be um to be prominent when when that day comes okay now you're in a very competitive market so what makes you or your organization so successful in recruiting players and coaches to come and play for you where there are unlimited options yeah it's a great point and, and we're in a real hotbed of talent in the ontario area um you know we have many many quality male and female players and so why us well we we, we have a, a track record we've proven that we can we can sort of get you to, to some of the better schools and 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 you know and beyond this especially some of the people that have come through duncan and billy's tutelage through the years went on to play national team level with, with canada the blue devil specifically it's, it's just really trying to improve and and clarify that, that academy pathway so where did the teenagers how do they they step up what are the opportunities for them how can we increase that competition and, and, and get them the right uh the right challenges needed and the right kind of levels of, of of adversity i guess to to grow and become become a pro soccer player um so yeah we're, we're, we're doing a great job uh, the difficult things that we faced in in, in toronto are uh, you know facilities and and cost and and just really the pay to play model causes some restrictions and we're trying really hard to figure that out and get to a point where we can offer some some free football for uh for, for some of the older kids but to do that we need to create a business model that uh, has a foundation that can can fund that up from from the bottom up so uh we're working hard chen and i to to, to make that possible and we're, we're making some good inroads but we've got a, a bit of a ways to go yes and that was a very interesting point um you know in other jurisdictions talent leads the way but we know in north america there's another model that to offset the cost of running such a large operation parents pay what we would deem to see above the usual you know small entry level registration fees um there is no other way around it i guess unless there is a, a, a manchester city comes in and actually says hey we are going to now partner with oakville and we're going to brand it as the oakville manchester city fc and cover all costs am i correct you are correct and and it's very unfortunate and you know there's there's, there's no real profit uh, in the business uh because of the cost so that's that's the hard facts that um i think a lot of people are misinformed and they feel like some of these academies are are, are, are making money but i can assure you that none of these academies are actually making money you know you take a tfc for example who are the professional uh one of a few professional teams with the canadian premier league just starting up but the the sort of biggest professional team in the area and they spend millions on their academy and and and, and most of that's lost unless they unearth the talent that becomes significant enough that they can sell it for for, for millions of dollars so um it's difficult uh field costs um cost to play cost to register in these leagues is is significant so so that's an issue but we're trying to bring that down we're doing our best to, to like i said create a system that, that that sort of funnels that up to the top so the the best talents at the the older age groups can can find a place to play that's free or affordable uh and and we also do you know a foundation program where anyone who doesn't have the means to pay and play for uh, the Oakville blue devils as as uh, sponsored through their, their experience and their, their youth soccer uh but it's not enough you know and it, it's a collective effort it's not just the blue devils issue i think it's a collective effort between the larger organizations canada soccer ontario soccer and some of the bigger clubs and in, in, in uh district leagues to make sure that we, we we provide equal access for boys and girls and no matter where your mom and dad work and kind of what income comes in so um 
I am personally uh, pushing hard to, to, to make that possible. I, I come from the UK where, as you know, Carl, it's a different system. If you're good enough, you pay very little money, if any at all, and you sort of find your level. Unfortunately, there are a lot of kids that are restricted here uh, because of finances, and I want to change that. And I'm, I'm on a mission with Shane and the Blue Devils organization to, to change that. Yes. Now, looking at your entire setup, which is magnificent, um, but I have noted something. Am I correct? You don't have your own stadium or fields that you can say this is where the entire organization is housed. Am I correct? You are correct. We don't. It's been a, a big aim of, of, of Shen and I to find that. Um, I think the stadium is going to be w way more difficult than even just the facility that we can call home where, where we base all our academy and, and higher level uh, you know, teams training. So we've, we've managed to do that with, with a local school. We've, we've been quite innovative where we've made a partnership between a facility management company and a school. And obviously uh, the Blue Devils is the primary tenant beyond school hours to, to make sure that we, we fill up that time. And, and, you know, it's been beneficial for us. It gives us a home. We can put a little bit of logos and, and, and Blue Devils branding around there and so we're excited about that there, there'll obviously be space for other organizations as well above and beyond but what we'll have kind of first choice of the hours and the times that we need and, and that's very important that's hopefully going to come heading into to next winter because of covid we're a bit a bit pushed this winter unfortunately when it was originally planned so next winter we will have that stadium wise we we have a great relationship with sheridan college so we play at a a college which is, is a lovely little stadium one of the best in our league uh but it's not ours we, we we sort of rent it so as we move forward and we think about our ambitions and our plans then at some point we will probably engage in a conversation with with the city of oakville uh and ourselves and and, and see if we can come up with some kind of arrangement where we can we can build that stadium whether it be for uh for, for league one ontario or, or for beyond if we develop as an organization we we think about Canadian Premier League one day, then uh, then we would need that stadium. So um, continued conversations, one step at a time. The, the, the training facility is is definitely more important for the larger organisation, and we're, we're pleased to say that we're we're on the the edge of making that a reality. All right, and as we go into a mini break, we want to thank our sponsors. I'm also going to invite. Your partner, Mr. Vernon Springer, who is located, well, Fumson Kits and Nevis is located in Antigua, so the Caribbean region, so he can ask some questions for the young boys and girls that are looking to be professional players in North America, how they can join your organization, or what they should be looking for to come over as a collegiate player first, and then maybe try to find their way. So I'm going to um, bring in Vernon. When your body is challenged, it burns fuel and energy. Respond to every challenge with Altitude Sports Drink. It replenishes, restores, and prepares you for the next level. Altitude is uniquely formulated with an electrolyte blend and magnesium available in fruit punch, blue frost, and grape. Altitude. Raise your game. Dem Sports is an innovative sports equipment manufacturer specialising in the production of high quality sports nets and cages for clubs, universities and schools. The development of a Dem Sports concertina cage, either as a single or double width sports net, has helped schools in inner city areas where space is a premium to include sports such as cricket and tennis in the curriculum in a safe and enjoyable way. The nets were developed really for when we had schools with a problem space, so it could be used in limited areas, folds back to the wall to a minimum of 550 millimetres and pulls out to 8 metres just over. This sort of equipment is exactly the solution that, that, that many head teachers will, will look to use. Um, it is space saving, it is easy to operate, it is relatively low cost, um, and again, the impact of having provision within the school grounds is a real plus point. Dem Sports are the world leaders in sports nets for schools. They have a range of net sizes to suit all spaces and can custom build whatever you require. 
For more information on how we can help you transform your play space at school safely, quickly and affordably, contact Dem Sports for details. Seeing is experiential. Seeing is everyday life. Seeing is style, class, and sheer sophistication. At iMobile Vision Care, we offer state-of-the-art lab technology and the widest variety of quality eyewear from the biggest brands to suit your lifestyle. Stop by our offices at Dr. Rosalie Drive, Lower Gambles to get a comprehensive digital eye exam or call us at 562-7823 and ask about our optical care services. Eye Mobile Vision Care. See and be seen. Let me take this opportunity to say how uh, delighted and excited I am to be part of uh, the Island Cup as an ambassador. I I'm really looking forward to it. I know it's a great initiative that will give uh, our young footballers in the region an opportunity for them to highlight their product. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it, which will be hopefully, hopefully happen uh, next year. Uh, we know that we are going to do some trial times at this particular time with COVID-19. Let me just take this opportunity to, uh, to say to, uh, to, to everyone globally to, to continue to, to stay as safe as you can, also to continue to, uh, to try and fulfill all the, 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 the requirements which are on board for you to, uh, to stay as safe as possible. God bless. Hi there guys, it's Sol Campbell here. Former Tottenham, Arsenal, Newcastle, Portsmouth and of course England International. The Island Cup starts next summer 2021. Be there guys because I'm going to be there. All the best. Stay safe, wash your hands and wear your masks. See you there guys. Welcome, Vernon. Hi. Hi. Season greetings to everybody from Antigua and Barbuda. It is a lovely time here, lovely weather. How are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. The weather's a bit different here. It's kind of chilly today. I wish I was with you, but it's it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes. Yeah, and it is. So we had a good well. talk. We had a good talk about the introduction of Oakville Blue Devils and who is Steve and Cudwell and the intent of the franchise or the organization to grow. And we're now going to head into young boys and girls in Canada. They have options for, you know, uh, North American football or Canadian football league. They have ice hockey. They have other opportunities. What makes them want to be soccer players uh, when, you know, there are other traditional sports ice skating that are probably very attractive to them? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, the best athletes are usually playing multiple sports at, at specific ages and then they're, uh, they're migrating more towards the, the hockeys uh, and, and, and maybe basketball a little bit. But I think we're finding that uh, because of the success of the national team, that, that these, uh, these both national teams these boys and girls are, are starting to see that they can they can get to the highest levels of the game uh, by playing soccer and by developing their skills. So um, I hope that the uh, the women winning gold at, at the Olympics recently, and obviously the men tracking towards uh, Qatar in 2022, will mean that, that that more of the better athletes will will, will choose soccer. And ultimately, I, I believe it's a generational thing, Carl. It's it's a case of this game has been growing. The the development of the three. Um, MLS teams, Vancouver, TFC, uh, Toronto and, and, and Montreal has been huge. CPL has been absolutely enormous as well and they're adding franchises all the time. So there, there is a clearer uh, pathway and a clearer idea that, that, that football is you know, a sport that you can achieve in and that you can get to, to a great level. So it's coming. Um, fingers crossed we'll start to really reap the benefits of that in the next few years. And with the growth of the women's game in Canada, 
I believe the women are currently ranked higher than the men in international football. So do you see influx of young girls that are actually now choosing soccer as a both an academic but also an athletic pathway? Absolutely. It's always been pretty popular, to be honest, with the, with the girls uh, and the women because they know that, that success is there and, and, and they're pretty clear on what they're their, their pathway is is it, is is it through a you know a Canadian school or is it is it Division One soccer and through a US school and then on the national team and they're clear on 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 what that might be and where they can play and uh, it's pleasing for me to see the women's game grow globally. I feel like the work that's been done in Europe professionally is is enormous and I just think it provides more more pathways for for young girls to to believe in their dreams and to get to where they want to go. Uh, with the men's, we've had a bit to go, but like I said, we're on the right track. But um, there's nothing like success, Cal. You know, when you watch, when, you know, I, you know, I think there's about 5 million people in Canada, an enormous number for a soccer game, got up early one morning in the summer to watch our women's national team play and then win through a penalty shootout, uh, Olympic gold, was was just incredible. I, I'll never forget it. I was there myself with my young boys. Um, 13 and 14 year old boys and my mother was over for the UK and just to enjoy that moment and for everyone to see that kind of success is, is vital for the game in general and I was so pleased that the women after you know knocking on the door for a couple of years got the gold that they so thoroughly deserved. Yes and I'm going to just check in with Vernon um, he's on the screen but uh, maybe some technical difficulties. Vernon are you still there? Yeah I'm Listen, you guys, loud and clear. Okay, so um, let's head over to the region. Vernon is in Antigua and Barbuda. He's originally from St. Kitts and Nevis. Any questions on the how the youth players from the Caribbean region may want to come over to Canada and become professionals? You want to put that forward to Stephen? Well, Stephen, you know, Canada has been, I would say, a big brother to the Caribbean. In fact, the school that I went to in St. Kitts and Nevis called the Irish Town School, which was in the capital, Bastia, was built by Canada. That's a long time ago. Um, so you will understand the partnership of, of Canada really dominating and being part of the region. In fact, Athletics Canada worked very closely with the government of St. Kitts and Nevis, I would say maybe from about 2015, 2014, 2014 to about up to 2020, where you had a number of Canadian athletes who came to St. Kitts and Nevis, stayed at the Marriott Hotel and trained at the Kim Collins Athletic Facility. In fact, Athletics Canada also introduced or built a gym at the Kim Collins Athletic Facility, brought down equipment, ice baths. So Canada has really been a friend to the region. Um, and in terms of sports development, you know, that has always been high on the agenda. The unique thing is what happens after COVID because we, it's a challenge now. So mentally, you know, there, there are challenges even to, to get from the Caribbean to Canada or to Europe, you name it. Um, how do we readjust? Because already you would have had some difficulties. Even going to the US is a challenge. And with the COVID regulations now, do you see any relaxation in trying to help students um, from this side of the woods, which is the Caribbean? Yeah, I sincerely hope so. Um, the, the, the true honest answer is that, you know, there's a lot of unknown. Uh, it's hard to say what will happen in terms of government point of view, but I think we're all clear and that we want things to go back to normal or a new normal, whatever it may be, but but it's, it's important that everyone gets an opportunity to to get to the want to go and that, that, that we we safely make this a, a a global world again a world that we can we can travel and that we can accept people from different countries so i uh i know for a fact that there's a lot of talent in your region um we've seen some of that talent make it to the pro game in canada uh, in north america and beyond uh so there's certainly um there's certainly a real a real desire on my end to, to, to create the pathways again to to invite some teams and some players 
to come over to have that, that cross border play, that experience that, that's needed for young athletes to to grow mentally and of course uh, technically and tactically to be the best players that they can, and then eventually, if if through that cross border uh, you know team play or whatever it may be, then really to try and invite some people in to to help them as a stepping stone on on the roads to a higher a higher career. So. Um, Fingers crossed we get back to normal. I know we've been throwing a bit of a curveball with the latest um, the latest strain of, of COVID. Uh, it's causing some, some big issues. Uh, but but very soon I, I, I pray that we're back to normal and we can start uh, checking at the area for talent and, and, and getting them here to, to showcase that talent. Well, well, let's look at coaching education or administration education because that is key. And thirdly, I know this is a broad question. The Caribbean has always produced natural athletes, but in the Canadian and in the American system, you'd want to also find a player who can fit into that system because everybody's system is completely different. So you as a coach, Stephen, there'll be a particular system that you're playing, but the Caribbean athletes sometimes bring that natural ability and flair. Um, is this something, how can this be honed? Because you know, on the Caribbean, you're just naturally strong, fast, and then you have to be technically minded now when you get to the US or you get to Canada. Yeah, I, I actually believe that balance is, is one of the most important things in football and, and, and balance between, you know, skill players and, and athletes and relationships and how that merges into make successful teams. You know, I've, I've been a part of some, some great teams in the UK when I played. And, and saw what kind of goes into um, the qualities that go into to some of these players. You know, I played with a Jamaican international at Birmingham, Marlon King, who, who was an absolutely wonderful player. He had, he had so much talent, uh, Jamaican background. Uh, you know, I could think of a guy like Kevin Molino, Trinidad and Tobago, um, Wells, who, who's Bermuda, who obviously plays with Bristol, uh, Naki Wells, like wonderful players. So, um, I have saw the talent. I know it's it's absolutely incredible the players that are being produced in the Caribbean and how they can they can make it to the highest level. So can we provide more opportunities? Can we educate these players on uh, the essentials needed to play at that level in the UK or indeed USL and MLS CPL level here in North America? I think that's important as well because it's it's you know any player will, will tell you it's more than just one aspect of your game you have to be competent in, in so many areas but um i believe in the area i believe in the the, the talent and the, the, there's something unique about a caribbean player that you just don't find in anybody else so um it's always exciting for me to look at that kind of talent and and try and figure a way uh, you know uh, developing it and integrating it into to a North American team. Well, I, I think that really would have answered the question. What, what about the coaching education? Because again, you see, in the Caribbean, if the coaches don't come up to speed with first world coaching to understand what you want, then it, it makes it harder for the Caribbean athlete. You know, sometimes we're thinking that the Caribbean athletes know. The, the coaches in the Caribbean the way they play is the way they coach. So even though you come down and you conduct a coaching course, the, how they play is how they coach. But And they are not in a preparation mood of using data and technology to be able to advance the athletes. That's some of the athletes. Um, everybody's not exposed to that. So that's why I was almost concerned about um, coaching education and you know how best we bring um, coaches up to speed. Yeah, we, we, you quite simply have to be capable when it comes to data and technology. Um, as a coach these days, it's it's just everywhere and it's it's only going to increase as we move on. So, um, you know, it's, it's it's like the ingredients I just talked about as a player. You know, it's, it's, it's all very well saying, well, I'm super skillful. I don't need to run or I don't need to have power or, or vice versa. It's, it's, it's a non-negotiable. You have to be competent in every area. And so when you're a coach these days, you need to be up to speed when it comes to the technology. Um, for me, a successful coach is always someone that you can that you can kind of mine for that knowledge, and that they have an ability to transfer that knowledge 
into their students, i.e. Their, their, their team, their players. Um, and, and that's a skill in itself, and it, and it has to be taught, and it has to be nurtured, and it has to be developed. And, and, and so it sometimes takes time, but at the end of the day, if you've played at a level or you have an idea in the game and you want to try and transfer that ac across, then ultimately you've got to get on the grass, you've got to practice, and, and you've got to be taught the right things, the right, given the right tools to succeed. So I, I'd like to see some more, kind of, again, cross-border COVID permitting uh, collaboration between the different organisations, USSF and Canada Soccer, and, and how can we create these, these events or or these seminars or whatever it may be, it's probably going to be a virtual thing these days with the, with the world the way that it is. And again, technology comes in there. But how do we create these, these um, cross-border communications and collaborations to help everyone to be better and to, to, to sort of learn a different way of doing things? That, that's what I'd like to see. Uh, and I really sincerely hope that it comes from the top level, but we're more than willing to share ideas and to create some stuff through the Blue Devils for, for every, anyone who's interested in the Caribbean region. My last question. Um, 2024, the United States of America and Canada will host the World Cup. So you already have USA, Mexico, Canada. In the CONCACAF region, we're talking about one Caribbean. But sometimes when you talk about one Caribbean, you have little countries like Anguilla and Montserrat who will not be up to speed or not come quickly up to speed in the, in the CONCACAF region. And the gap, I just think, is just really, really, really wide. I mean, you see Jamaica right now struggling. Um, it's an expensive venture. I wanted to get your view on the biennial World Cup. How will this help the Caribbean countries? Because if Jamaica, as it stands right now, financially is struggling, then you have to go to a World Cup every two years, then it means that the football fraternity in those territories are going to bankroll the government or bankroll the private sector, which have small private sectors. And the further you go in the World Cup um, qualifying campaign is the more expensive it gets. Yeah, well, first I want to say I, I really don't agree with a World Cup every two years. I think it takes away the value of the World Cup. And I, I agree with your point that the expense of that is, is, is way too much. So. Uh, we, we all know why that might be coming and it's it's purely financial and it's purely to line the pockets of the rich. So I, I don't want to see that at all. Um, yeah, how will how can we how can we make it co more cost efficient and, and, and how will twenty twenty six develop Caribbean countries? And in my mind it's it takes a little bit of thought in terms of how we can uh, bring everyone maybe a central location and have more competition within one venue rather than flying all over the Caribbean and the cost that comes with that, I think would be very important. Um, because I, I know we have a wonderful leader in, in CONCACAF with the president, Vic Montagliani, a Canadian, a guy I know pretty well. And I know that he, he really believes in growing the game all over uh, CONCACAF. He really is not focused on the big guys, uh, whether that be the, the, the top three in, in Canada, US and Mexico, or the Jamaicas and, 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 and the sort of Honduras, Panamas of the world. You know, how do we grow the game entirely and how do we bring along some of the smaller nations to be better? Well, I think that we, we, we have to be cognizant of the fact that dragging them all over Caribbean and, and, and North America is, is, is not beneficial. Let's try and create some some events, some venues, some competition that is cost efficient, that brings everyone to the one location and allows them to develop or, or compete um, with, with, without traveling so much. So it, it's, it's a difficult one. It really is. I mean, I've been part of some games and my role is the, my, my old role is assistant coach of Canadian men's national team between 2017 and 2019. And I've saw the challenges that the smaller Caribbean teams face coming into players, whether it be in Canada or in, in, in Florida at times. Um, it's, it's been such a challenge for them to get there and and to, to, to try and stay stay on the coattails of a Canada in terms of how we're preparing for the game to how their team's preparing for the game. The gap's too big and the region needs to figure out together how we can close that gap. 
It was indeed a pleasure speaking to you. And uh, like again, I, I want to wish you from sunny Antigua and Barbuda um, all the best um, for the remainder of 2021 and for 2022. And I hope that we, you can use this platform really to, you know, to get your message out there because the Hal and myself we designed this platform with a view of more or less educating folks. Um, educating the young boys and girls throughout the entire caravan of what is required because when we look around most times the athletes don't know the coaches don't know the administrators don't know and who, who suffers in the end the communities so we want to change that to our medium here Th thank you and thanks for having me on it's a pleasure uh like i said again i wish i was at the beach with you but it's a pleasure to speak and uh yeah football you said a great word there community and football is about community so we all have to support each other it's the greatest sport the greatest game in the world so um it's a pleasure to be on share my ideas and and hopefully this can lead to some actionable things when your body is challenged it burns fuel and energy respond to every challenge with altitude sports drink it replenishes restores and prepares you for the next level Altitude is uniquely formulated with an electrolyte blend and magnesium available in fruit punch, blue frost, and grape. Altitude. Raise your game. Dem Sports is an innovative sports equipment manufacturer specialising in the production of high quality sports nets and cages for clubs, universities and schools. The development of a Dem Sports concertina cage, either as a single or double width sports net, has helped schools in inner city areas where space is a premium to include sports such as cricket and tennis in the curriculum in a safe and enjoyable way. The nets were developed really for when we had schools with a problem space so it could be used in limited areas it folds back to the wall to a minimum of 550 millimeters and pulls out to eight meters just over this sort of equipment is exactly the solution that, that, that many head teachers will will look to use um, it is space saving it is easy to operate it is relatively low cost um, and again the impact of having provision within the school grounds is a, a real plus point. Dem Sports are the world leaders in sports nets for schools. They have a range of net sizes to suit all spaces and can custom build whatever you require. For more information on how we can help you transform your play space at school safely, quickly and affordably, contact Dem Sports for details. Seeing is experiential. Seeing is everyday life. Seeing is style, class, and sheer sophistication. At iMobile Vision Care, we offer state-of-the-art lab technology and the widest variety of quality eyewear from the biggest brands to suit your lifestyle. Stop by our offices at Dr. Rosalie Drive, Lower Gambles to get a comprehensive digital eye exam or call us at 562-7823 and ask about our optical care services. Eye Mobile Vision Care. See and be seen. Let me take this opportunity to say how uh, delighted and excited I am to be part of uh, the Island Cup as an ambassador. I I'm really looking forward to it. I know it's a great initiative that will give uh, our young footballers in the region an opportunity for them to highlight their product. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it, which will be hope hopefully happen uh, next year. Uh, we know that we are going to some, some trial times at this particular time with COVID-19. Let me just take this opportunity to, uh, to say to, uh, to, to everyone globally to, to continue to, to stay as safe as you can. Also to continue to, uh, to try and fulfill all the, 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 the requirements which are on board for you to, uh, to stay as safe as possible. God bless. Hi there guys, it's Sol Campbell here, former Tottenham, Arsenal, 
Newcastle, Portsmouth and of course England International. The Island Cup starts next summer 2021. Be there guys because I'm going to be there. All the best. Stay safe, wash your hands and wear your masks. See you there guys. Thanks a lot, um, Steve. Um, there were some great questions about the region. I'm just going to bring it back to the Oakville Blue Devils. I see that your senior man's team was doing quite well in second place. Um, when does your season actually end? The season has ended. Uh, we, we unfortunately uh, fell at the, the last hurdle in the, uh, in the final, so we didn't manage to, to, to win the final, which was disappointing because it gives us a berth and the Canadian Championship for next season, where we potentially could play against a, a TFC or a, a Montreal or Vancouver Whitecaps. So we're, we're disappointed about that. We we felt in the circumstances with COVID that we competed really well. We uh, we had some, some great results throughout the season, but certainly in the playoffs. And unfortunately, our women failed at the last hurdle as well. So we, we lost two finals. I think we should be proud that we were we were competing in them, but it's never nice to lose finals. And we'll be back next year, ready to compete again. We are we're heading towards potentially some reform in, in League One Ontario, which will be very exciting and and uh, will help grow the league. So it's it's a space that we're happy to be in, and we feel that uh, some real development is going to come in the next next few years. Okay. With the Pro MLS League, and I believe there's now the Canadian Premier League as well. Am I correct? Yes. Or yes. Yeah. Um, in Europe, you have the promotion relegation. Can you actually be promoted out of the League One division, or is that something where you re will remain and play in for a period of time? Yeah, you, you remain and play in it. I think in terms of some reform through our league, that there might be some promotion and relegation on the horizon, which will be, be very exciting. And, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll see that soon because I, I do believe in that. I don't think it's going to come in MLS anytime soon. I think the numbers that people are playing for franchise and, and, and the way that uh, the way that the system, sporting system works here, I, I don't see that coming, unfortunately, but who knows? Um, and yeah, you know, it's we, we are in a place where we, we compete at a high level. It, it is semi-professional, but it's a pathway. There's a lot of connection and scouting towards Canadian Premier League, so there's a way into the pro game. And there's also that berth if you can win the championship, again, to get into the Canadian Championship, which is our cup competition in Canada, and that's obviously growing in size as more and more teams are, are being added. So um, we're, we're happy with where we are at the moment. Uh, who knows, one day we might have ambitions to become that, that pro club and move into CPL, but at the moment we're really happy where we are. We provide that that uh, development, that next stage. If people are not quite ready to go to Europe or go to North American professional team, then they have another stage of development. They may uh, marry that with school. So there's a way that you go to school and you still play in League One Ontario as well, and you get an education, and then eventually uh, there's the, the still a way back round to, to get the professional game. So, so we're in a good place and we're happy where we are at the moment. How do you recruit your non-Canadian players? Is it by word of mouth? Do you have uh, networks internationally? Or is someone like Vernon and myself could say, hey, we have a potential player. We may have some footage. Or can we send them over to you for two or three weeks to take a look at and find out how we can offset some of those costs? Yeah, we're absolutely open to that. Uh, it, it's word of mouth, Carl. You know, we have some great connections. We have some vast experience uh, through the leadership group, the soccer leadership group that we have at the club. Um, so we're always open to to listening and, 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 and to try to recruit out with our, 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 our academy, essentially, which is our, our main source of, uh, of sort of recruitment. We want uh, the players coming from different areas, whether it be UK or Caribbean or even the US. Um, so, yeah, the idea is we don't have a specific head of recruitment or anything like that. It, it, it's more that, that soccer leadership group. Um, get in touch and let us know who's there. We'll, we'll try and look at the footage and, 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 and find a way to to bring them in, to, to have a look at them. 
hopefully in person. Um, and, and, and so, yeah, once once travel becomes a bit easier, then, then that's that's a big option for us. Sounds fantastic. Now, you've, the Oakville Blue Devils are becoming more international. Um, for the viewers, there's a small relationship being formed with, you know, a club in Bermuda. Um, hopefully that really gets set in stone and developed once COVID-19 moves away or we can live with it with a little bit more travel between both clubs. Our youth, one of the youth teams actually traveled to Canada and visited your um, organization and they were hosted for about a 10 day period. So that is something we want to reciprocate. But do you see yourself branching out loosely to maybe say you have a partnership in Jamaica, you have a partnership in Antigua and Bermuda and you get somewhat fresh choice at players that are not ready for the EPL or even the championship to come over to you and go to school? Um, yeah, absolutely, Cal. That, that's exactly what we want. We, you mentioned earlier about Man City coming in and, and potentially funding it, which is a, a great prospect. But for me... Had a dream, had a dream. Yeah, it is a dream. But for me, I'd rather see more avenues, more pathways for players. You know, like to think of that one guy ending up at Man City or one girl ending up at Man City women's team is, is a, a, you know, very aspirational. But, but I would rather have some different development pathways through the Blue Devils and then out to wherever it may be, USL, CPL, MLS, you know, English Premier League or, or teams in Belgium and Europe, different places. So I want to cr create as many pathways as possible for our talent to experience, for us to assess and say, this boy or girl probably lands in this sort of area, this sort of league, and, 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 and having that relationship to say, you want to take a look at them, you want to invite them in for a week or two to, to, to see them closer. So um, the, the more footprint that we have in the Caribbean and elsewhere is, is vitally important uh, to, to, to be a bit like, you know, the, one of the airline maps that you see in the magazines where you have all these connections kind of coming in and out of, of Oakville, of the Blue Devils to, to different places is my dream and my ambition for the club. So, um, yeah, we're on the path to getting there. We have some great relationships at the moment, but to try and make them a bit more official and a bit more solid and, and actually have some real actionable items, some, you know, whether it's a club coming, which was a great experience, I'm sure for the kids who came over, played some competitive games, visited uh, some matches, went to a TFC match and, and had a, 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 an overall successful experience in, in Canada, in Toronto, more of that, more kind of stuff where, where things actually happen and, and hopefully players cross paths would be would be my goal and my aim uh, as president moving forward. Yes, and as we close out, I want to touch on the, on the sports tourism side. You know, people love to come to Canada. You know, it's a beautiful place. It has a lot of attractions. And we were fortunate through my good friend, Brett Merson, and um, the CEO, Mr. Shen Go, to have the Oakville Blue Devils visit Bermuda. And when you come to our small islands, you know, you're not just playing the local club teams. I think um, Vernon can allude to that, that you actually can play our national team. So some of your players may not represent the Canadian national team, but they can say, I played against the national team of St. Kitts and, and, and Nevis or Antigua and Barbuda or Bermuda. And that is probably, you know, we can work together when you're recruiting to say, we're gonna go to Bermuda and you're gonna play the national team. And you may play against Nikki Valves or some other players that they would see on, on, on TV. So um, hopefully it's something that we can build in the region with our connections and get you into Jamaica or St. Kitts and you can play some high level football and enjoy the summer climate with the, the hundreds of beaches in St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua and Bermuda and you know the nine or 10 beaches we have here in Bermuda. But as yeah. we close off, Steve, okay, yeah, Steve, you wanna- oh, Sorry, on? Cal, I was just gonna say that uh, actually my son's age group, we were planned on a trip to Bermuda and unfortunately, it was right at the beginning of COVID. We had to cancel, uh, which was a big disappointment for the kids and and for uh, some of the parents, myself included. So uh, hopefully we can get that going again. I know we have some credits there to, to kind of pick that back up when time permits. And as we did our planning and thought about our international travel, so many things, as everyone knows, are just up in the air because of COVID at the moment. But we will be picking that up and we will be making that re a reality in the new year. All right. So, Steve, on behalf of Vernon and myself, the Caribbean Sports Entertainment Management Group, the program is Football Insight and all of our sponsors. We want to thank you 
I want to thank the Oakville Blue Devils for coming on the platform to create better relationships and share information in the region. And I would like to thank my good friend, Brett Mosen and Shen, who are over there with you. Say hi to them. Happy holidays. And let's try and get the Oakville Blue Devils back to Bermuda to enjoy our hospitality. Let's get you over to either Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis. And then let's reciprocate travel and sharing of the players that they can all find a level of play and coaches and that the game continues to grow in CONCACAF because that's where we are situated. So thank you, sir. Thank you, Carl. Thank you both. It was a pleasure coming on. Uh, I, I love talking football always, but certainly uh, development in the game is, is, is really important to me. So, uh, yeah, a great chat and uh, let's keep up the conversation. And as we close out, which, which EPL team do you support? <laughs> I don't. Uh, I can't choose one of my one of my teams, but certainly be a Burnley or a Newcastle or or someone who I've managed to, to play with in my time. But yeah, I keep an eye on them all. Uh, but I don't have a favourite. Newcastle, will they get relegated? <laughs> they could. They're in trouble. They're going to have to make some big signings in January. Well, with the with the earnest they have, you may get a call, Steve. You never know. They have the money. I hope so. <laughs> All right. Have a good holiday, my friend. And um, Brandon and I in the region, Merry Christmas to everyone in Canada, anyone affiliated with the Oakville Blue Devils. And as soon as COVID allows, let's be able to meet in person, shake hands, and then hear that whistle blow and have our young people playing the game and sharing international experiences. Take care. Thank you.